From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello and welcome back to the Anxiety Project podcast. I am Brad Robinson. This episode is 128. Thank you for being here with me today. And I'm talking about the ego. I'm talking about how when we are kids, our minds and bodies are like sponges absorbing the beliefs and actions of the people around us, especially our parents, the people that we look up to, and how our anxiety gets fueled by having this set mindset being stuck in the past from these poor beliefs that hold us back from improving our lives and getting to that next level in our life. But before I get into that, I want to talk about and go over your comments on last week's episode 127, which was about my first addiction with caffeine and how I overcame that first addiction, right? You got to start somewhere. And caffeine was that first thing that I tackled. A really great episode. Really, really, really powerful. Kyra leaves a comment saying, great episode. For me, it was extremely difficult to break my sugar addiction. It took me over a year to seriously break it. Yeah, Kyra, that was something that was huge for me. Breaking that sugar addiction, that was massive. Adam K says, the episode where you talk about your addiction to pornography was unbelievably eye-opening. You are right. It's like climbing Mount Everest. Taking on those demons is difficult to say the least. Thank you, Adam. Yes, that if you're interested in that episode, which I highly recommend, it's episode number 104 of the podcast. Thank you, Adam, for your comment. Taps says... So glad you released this episode this week. I am currently trying to break my Googling of symptoms habit. This episode hits home. Thank you. Well, thank you, Taps. I'm so glad this episode has connected with you and your journey. And um, that was another thing that was huge for me. Googling those symptoms. Bad, a bad habit. All right. So let's get into this episode Now, the first thing I want to talk about is how the molding of our identity begins when we are born. Right when we're born, we grow up as sponges, absorbing the speech, the actions of our role models, good or bad. We as children are figuring out how to act in the world. A child who sees a spider crawling along will look up at the mother to make sense of this anomaly that just occurs, but also to know how to respond to the spider. If the mom screams, jumps back, then the child knows How to respond to spiders now. Well, they're not welcome. They are a threat. And so we grow up absorbing the actions and behaviors of those closest to us. And those become ingrained. Maybe you developed an oversensitivity to your health because one of or both of your parents reacted to their health In that manner, we grow up as a puppet. We grow up with the programs that have been installed for years and years and years. And perhaps all this programming is holding you back from being a fully functional, independent human being. We see that in Pinocchio, where he's a puppet, right? But we see the transformation of Pinocchio throughout the movie where the more he ventures into the unknown and gathers new information, 
the more he becomes an independent, fully functional human being. In the end, he actually becomes a human being, right? And I'll get into that a little bit later in the podcast. So as we grow, we get social labels placed onto us, how others see us. This helps cement in our identity, the sense of who we are. People tell us we are like this, we are like that, and that cements our identity. And maybe they even give us nicknames. I've gotten nicknames growing up, and that helped cement this identity. Then that makes us feel accepted, and then that's good, because after all, we are social creatures. But maybe you're being accepted by the wrong people. And I, looking back, I saw that. I wanted to be accepted. I remember the people I was trying to impress. And then looking back at it now, I see those people as being people that I wouldn't look up to now. They weren't the right people. They were actually negative people. And I was trying to be accepted by them. I didn't care how negative they were. I didn't have a proper map of the world to even determine what negative really means, right? Because I was young, rebellious, uh, anxious, and trying to fit in, trying to get in with the cool kids, whatever that means, right? And that longing of acceptance even with the wrong people, was keeping me stuck. It was, it was keeping me from being that independent person that was marching to the beat of their own drummer. And I always admired those people, the people that weren't, weren't out there to be accepted, more so living in their their world of of solid beliefs and moral values and not looking to to win over other people and i always admired those people so the unconscious mind absorbs these labels and beliefs from the people around us right that's the sponge in in us growing up and this conditioning then comes with those identity statements like, I am an anxious person. I am always making mistakes. I am always attracting the wrong people, the wrong partner. I will never get this right. I was always depressed. These identity statements keep someone in their set mindset in their set mindset. But the, these statements are not who you are. They are who you think you are. The identity you have been playing out in the world, if threatened with any sort of change, will resist and you will jump back with anger. Right? Your perspective is right and that's that. But that's not true. That's not true. We can change. And so identity is essentially the ego. The ego is your attachment to form. Anything that comes into contact with the ego that is not in alignment with it will be ignored or you will meet it with resistance. But there could be answers there lurking in the unknown, <clears throat> excuse me, that will develop you further. And you see that in Pinocchio, right? That's how he becomes that independent, fully functional human being. And at the end, he becomes a real boy right? Well, why does he become a real boy? Well, he kept 
going out into the unknown and developing himself, even though he was bad at it. And that's the thing with my recovery at the beginning. I was so bad at it. I didn't know what I was learning. I felt like I couldn't absorb the information that I was learning about anxiety. I mean, why are you here listening to this podcast? You want to expand your knowledge. You want to expand what you know. And you want to absorb the information that you don't know. If I were to come onto this podcast and tell you the same information over and over and over again, the same way, you'll it'll it'll become so known to you that there's no new information to stimulate you, and so you wouldn't listen to it anymore. So, can you see how someone can eat be easily stuck? in this set mindset state? Well, yeah, because when you start to venture out of that set mindset state, you're met with that resistance and that is not the greatest of feelings, right? But it's in that unknown is where you develop. So when you begin to learn something new or when you engage in something you are not a accustomed to, then you feel the temporary strain or the pushback. But then later, you feel more comfortable in this new territory. And then you hear yourself say, well, it grew on me. It grew on me. Or I grew into it. Right? And that's true. When you go out into the domain of the unknown, it takes time to make that domain of the unknown into some known territory. But you have to explore it. You have to explore it. We can, in fact, change who we are. We can change our identity. I changed my identity. I am nowhere near the person I used to be five years ago. There's no comparison. And that is neuroplasticity. We can loosen our grip over old patterns that have been ingrained within us. A highly emotional memory when you are eight years old does not have to continue to run you when you are 30. Our brains are able to rewire neuro pathways. Maybe your mom, when you were eight, told you that you're not beautiful enough to find a partner later in life. And you take it to heart. Why? Because... What do you know? You're eight years old. You look up to your parent. They act as the ideal and judge, right? Even though they may have been horrible people, maybe they have negative beliefs. Doesn't matter. You are not independent enough to reject their own poor beliefs being projected onto you. And heck, we we experience that today. I mean, if somebody says something to you like you're not beautiful enough, well, it'll hurt, but it depends how much you've built a solid foundation beneath you. Does that make sense? For example, since I overcame so many obstacles to get where I am now, I, I'm comfortable with who I am and I, I strive to be better than I am continuously. And I have a lot more self-respect because I was able to venture off into the unknown and grow myself and face those demons. And so if somebody comes to me now and says something mean and insulting, in my mind, I say, well, 
that person who said that thing is having their own trouble, their own troubles in their life. That's why it's, I see that the reason why that person said that thing is because they have insecurities that are bubbling up in them. They're not properly socialized. They have demons of their own. And I use that self-talk to lessen the effect of those person's words, right? I, I recognize that I know who I am now. And if you say that to me, yeah, it'll hurt a little, but I now have the tools and the, the mind to reject and not take those words to heart. I'm not going to emotionally react strongly to those words. I just take it for what it is and I, I look at the person as somebody who's struggling with their own demons. And the parent, like I was saying before, they act as the ideal and the judge and well, you're not independent enough to reject those words, those beliefs, because what do you know, right? You're eight years old. And so you hold on to it because you emotionally react to their comment. And, and thus, because of that negative emotional reaction, that comment becomes ingrained within you and you hold on to it. And as you become older, it continues to affect how you perceive the world and act. And so this program needs to be uninstalled. It's outdated. It's only keeping you stuck in that past. And when you begin to explore new ways of being, then your perspective begins to shift. And that's what the unknown does you discover parts of you that you never knew existed. So I hope this is all connecting with you. And I hope you can see that continual stepping out into the unknown is necessary for self-development. Going through my recovery in the past, learning about anxiety, taking courses on CB. T, you know, NLP, those expanded my knowledge of, of who I am. So I really, I was really Sherlock Holmes of myself. That's what I was. I was looking up to mentors who went through the same troubles I went through. And so I was learning what did they do how do I act like them? What do I need to do daily to lessen my anxiety? What is anxiety? What, what is the amygdala? What are calming strategies? What are, what are things that I'm doing daily that is contributing to my anxiety? I was doing so many unconscious habits. I was running so many unconscious programs that was keeping me stuck in this loop of anxiety. Negative things were constantly were constantly attracted to me. I was constantly manifesting negative outcomes. That's because I was running bad programs. So you can remain in your set mindset or explore new ways of being and acting in the world. You may have to change habits, introduce new disciplines, look up to new mentors. This is the way to kill off all the parts of you that are only working against you. The outdated negative programs. It's time for an update. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's podcast episode. 
please leave your comments below. If you're listening on YouTube, if you haven't already, go over to iTunes and rate and review this podcast. That would mean a lot to me. Thank you for being here. And I'm so grateful that I get to share my journey overcoming anxiety on this platform. I'm so grateful for the comments you guys leave on YouTube and the questions that you ask. And this is a windy road with a lot of ups and downs. And venturing out into the unknown is difficult. It's challenging. But that's where you find the answers. So keep on developing and growing and challenging yourself. Absolutely important. And lastly, do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next podcast episode or video. Bye for now. Brad's powerful anxiety recovery program is available at unpluganxiety.com. The Anxiety Project program is downloadable and puts the power of anxiety recovery in your own hands. What are you waiting for? Visit unpluganxiety.com for more details. Recovery starts now.